Hi everyone. Just getting the live video started, making sure it's working. Bear with me. Just doing a spinning wheel of death in the corner, so I'm going to wait for that for a second. Marvellous. So lovely. It's all online and live. Marvellous. So hi everyone. It's lovely to see you on this blinking Friday. It was long enough wasn't it um, this weekend but happy Friday happy Friday happy Friday so looking forward to taking you through um, some some of my approaches to becoming a bit more adventurous so I have um, had quite a lot of questions lately from people saying well how can I become a bit more adventurous what should I try first and how can I make adventurous decisions and I don't think a lot of them actually meant outdoors necessarily and doing exciting things like climbing Mount Everest naked I think they meant things as well like other areas of life so maybe your work your own business perhaps your family life perhaps your friends so how can you make some decisions a bit more brave and a bit more adventurous so that's what I'm going to be having a look at tonight so if you're watching and you actually want to take part that is fine that's an easy thing to do you can add things in the comments um, on Facebook and let me know any questions you've got and also you can use a bit of a pen and paper to do the exercises that I'm going to take you through right now so these are just an introduction to get you thinking and get your brain working a little bit so the first thing I'll quickly go through again if you've watched a couple of my other Facebook lives I've talked about this before but this is about what is adventure so like I said it could be in any area of your life and it's really personal to you so as Rachel Kirkwood says adventure is anything that makes you go wow when you've done it so it could be giving your first presentation at work. It could be employing your first team member when you're a business person and own your own business. It could well be kayaking down the Mississippi. It could be any of those things. So it's just something that makes you go wow, or it could even be going out for your first one kilometre run. If it makes you go wow, it's an adventure and it's adventurous. So let's think about it like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do when you've got your pens and paper ready is ask you some questions to start making you think a bit bigger and maybe even dream a bit more or open your mind a little bit especially after the last year with covid it's been a deal breaker for a lot of outdoor adventures hasn't it and indeed in finding new jobs or doing new things with family so let's open our minds again and think a little bit bigger so i've got a few questions which i've gleaned from various people over my life and have been really useful for me to make me feel a little bit more adventurous so question number one that i'm going to ask you and i'd love you to take some notes and if you want to comment about your answers to these questions that would be fabulous if you don't that's totally fine it can be private so question number one i've got my notes just to check i get it right so what would you do in your life if you knew you couldn't fail which is an interesting question, isn't it? Because for quite a lot of us, and may I be gender specific, quite a lot of females, we often think, oh God, I can't do that. I, no, I can't do it. There's no way I'm going to be able to kayak down the Mississippi. Absolutely not. I can't. I'm not strong enough. I've got enough stamina. I've never done it before. I'll fall in. Whatever. So think about now and ponder, what would you do in your life if you couldn't fail? And like I say, that might be in your job. That might be in your um, business that might be in your family life, that might be in terms of doing something different with how you look, even. It could be absolutely anything, she says as she flicks her hair back after talking about how she looks. So anything in your life, what would you do if you couldn't fail? So one of mine recently has been about becoming a bit more part-time with employed work and starting up Infinite Pathways on the side, this Find Your Flow stuff. And I have to say, when I thought about that, I thought, no way, I can never do that. How am I ever going to work part time and start a new business? But actually, it's happened and there are some way, cheeky ways to do that. So that was one of my dream big answers to these questions. So question number two, and feel free to comment if you want to. Ah, Lisa, new job and relationship. Lisa, it's lovely to see you, my friend. A new job and relationship. Well, brilliant. Get that noted down, my love, and we will work through that on this call and we will see if we can get you that new job and relationship. Not guaranteeing it, not a fairy godmother, but let's see if we can get you an approach for that, my love. So, second big question, question number two. What would you do if you had all of the support that you needed? So that might not be as big a question, because actually that could be something small that you just think, God, I've not got enough support to be able to do that. I haven't got the money, I haven't got the time, I haven't got a partner to support me, or a family or a friend that could support me. So. What would you do 
if you had all the support that you needed. So think really big about that one. It could be anything you want to do. It could be small, it could be big. If you had all the support you needed, what would you do? Okay. And again, feel free if you, to share if you want to, but if it's very personal, it is for some people, don't worry about it. Don't need to share, just have it noted down. Okay, question number three. So it's a trio of questions and they're all similar, but with a slightly different slant. So the third one is about what have you wished you could do but never told anyone about. So I wished about probably for the last, hmm, I'd say 25 years that I could write a children's book. I desperately wanted to write a children's book. I was like, oh my God, no, I'm not an author. Most people understand grammar and sentence structure. I do not understand that at all, even though I was a teacher, don't tell anyone. Um, so I always wanted to be an author and I always wanted to write a children's book, but I was like, I can't tell anyone that. No way, because I just think I'm stupid, I'm just Joe, I'm just like the girl from Devon who doesn't know what she's on about. But actually, once I started to think about it, I really wanted to do that. It was a massive part of my life and I've just finished writing it and hopefully it's going to be published in the next couple of months. So think about something you wish you could do that you might have been too embarrassed or too fearful or too weird about telling other people. So think about that. So have a look at that list of things that you've done. If you can't think of the answers right now, that's okay. It doesn't always come like a gut feel sometimes. Take those questions away with you and have a think about them. But those questions are designed to make you think a bit bigger and make you think about the possibilities because we get one bloody life and we need to lead it as fully as we can. And it's hard sometimes because it's scary and it can be lonely, but we can do it. So those three questions are supposed to make you think, actually, what do I bloody want out of life? How do I want to be adventurous? Okay, so one of mine that I've done recently um, was around, start, like I say, starting my own business, but I was really scared about that. So what we found really with a lot of people that I've coached or that have come on, you know, find your flow weekends or whatever else, is that they talk about fear being the biggest stopper. When you get down to it, it's actually fear. It's not about money and it's not about time. It's about fear. And that might be fear of embarrassment or fear of failure or fear of not achieving what you want to do or looking silly in front of other people, which are all really natural and common fears. And sometimes they're real. Sometimes you might fail and you might be embarrassed, but sometimes they're like perceived in our brain and they're imagined fears. And actually there's a lovely way I'm going to show you that you can start to manage those fears and start to categorise them and plan with them a little bit and make them feel a little bit less scary. So that's what I'm going to go through now. So what I'd love you to do is pick one of those things that you've just thought about from those big questions, the one that jumps out at you, the one that makes you get really excited or you think, God, I really want to nail that one. That's been there for 20 years. Give me that one and I'll be happy. So pick one of those answers to your questions, whatever it might be. And then we're going to go through a bit of a process. So again, you might need your pen and paper. Um, so there's a bit of a process to managing fear that you can do. You can't get rid of fear. You can't eliminate it. It's actually a really helpful human process. It protects you from harm. It was all there from the caveman days. You know the old story. It's there to keep you safe from a saber-toothed tiger or whatever it was. But now our fears aren't really typically physical. A lot of them are emotional or spiritual or mental fears. So actually our mind working with fear all the time is quite a tiring, exhausting thing and it's not really needed. We ain't getting chased by a saber-toothed tiger most of the time. So it can be an unnecessary thing, but it's, it's needed to keep us alive and make sure that we're doing the right things for us. So there is a three-step process. And no, I don't love these three-step processes to getting rich or to becoming a billionaire or to becoming happy or whatever, but I've got a three-step process for this. So. The first step part of the process is to really clearly define your fear. So when I wanted to start my own business, I was like, oh my God, I'm really afraid my business won't succeed. But what does that actually mean? What was I actually scared of? So I asked myself, so what? So what if it doesn't succeed? And my answer to the so what was, I might not be able to pay my bills. Um, my, I might leave my house. My son might go hungry those types of things. So mine was really about security for my family. So my fear wasn't my business won't succeed. My fear was if it doesn't succeed, I might not be able to pay my bills and things. Okay, so that was number, step number one. I've even written it up. Define your fear really clearly with a so what, because being afraid of failure isn't the actual fear. 
there'll be something underneath it. It might be that you don't want to look stupid in front of your boss. It might be that you don't want to embarrass your child at school by doing something adventurous. So have a think about that and define your fear really quickly. Clearly, sorry, if you can do that now, that'd be amazing. If not, think about it afterwards. So ask yourself that question, so what? The second part of it is how you can prepare for that fear. Now, what do I mean by that? So what I mean is you can't always get rid of that fear. So I can't guarantee I'm not gonna lose some money and I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills with my new business. I can't guarantee that. But what can I do to reduce the chances of that fear happening so that I can do my adventurous thing? So I think about three things. Again, I've written them up. In my prepare stage, I think about what, how, and who can help me. So I've written mine up actually. I do it in a, I do it in a bit of a um, process really. So the prevent part, I could start my business part time. Okay, so that I've got a part time job to fall back on for the money, for the whatever. So I can start my business part time. And actually, I'll probably do that forever. I'll keep my business part time and I'll be self uh, and I'll be employed part time as well. Because it gives me that security and that level of joy between two different jobs and being able to support myself. I could also have partnered with someone in my new business. So spread that risk across two people. Okay, I could have gone into business with my partner or with a friend or with another business colleague and that would have spread that financial risk that was worrying me. I could also have researched my category really carefully, taken a year or two to think about it, done a ton of research, saved a load of money, got myself prepped financially for it. So actually that financial security risk wasn't there as much. So those were my three things I could do to prepare for that failure being a little bit less likely, okay? And me being more likely to make my adventurous decision work for me, okay? Step three in this is, I've got to, undo, I've got to unfold the whole thing now, is repair, wrong finger, repair. So this is all about what if my worst fear came true when I'm trying to be adventurous? What if I did fall out of the kayak? What if I didn't climb Mount Everest? What if my business didn't work? and I lost my money and I couldn't pay my bills. Okay, what the hell would I do at that point in time? Yeah, because it's not very nice, even though I've prepared for all these things, it could potentially still happen. So what can I do? So I can ask for help from my friends and family. So I could say to them, actually, I'm really struggling now. What can I do? What could you do to help me? Could someone loan me some money? Could someone help me just for a month to make my business work a bit more? Who could help me? And as humans, we always want to help others. So why wouldn't we ask for that help from other people? So that's number one, um, ask for help. Number two, I probably, if I've done my prepare right, I've got my part-time job to fall back on, marvellous. So actually, I'm not gonna be totally destitute. I've got a bit of cash that I can use to pay my bills. So if I've done my prepare right, my repair is easier. Um, and the third thing to think about is, I can always try again. It's not the end of the road. If a business fails once, or you don't get to the top of Everest once, or you fall in the Mississippi, or you, mess up your presentation and swear on it at work, eek, it's happened, um, then actually you can try again. Failure doesn't mean failure forever, it's a temporary state. It's not a permanent state and failure is totally the best way to learn, but it's your reaction to it. So that's why I've put in here actually repair is about self-care. It's about looking after yourself and saying, come on people, help me. I need some help here. How can I fix this and make sure it doesn't happen again really. So that's the three step process. So why don't we go through it with you and I'll repeat those things again and you can take your one big adventurous idea or decision that you want to make and start talking about the fear and planting it down. So what is your real fear is step one. So what? Ask yourself, so what? What if I'm scared of um, taking a new job, Lisa, for example? What if I'm scared? What's the so what about that? Is it about financial security? Is it about not knowing people in that job? Is it not being able to do that job? Is it um, that you won't like that job? Is it that you'll have a new commute that's two hours each way? What is it about thinking about a new job that you're actually really scared about? So define that fear. Second one, what can you do to prepare for that? So at least you might be able to think about finding out about some people who work there first at your new job. It might be trying a new job for a couple of days whilst you're on your holidays and just giving it a go, going into an office and saying, actually, I wanna come here and do a bit of work experience, I wanna do it for a couple of days. It might be taking the leap anyway and saying, I'm gonna do my self care if it goes wrong. It might be building up some savings so that if it doesn't go right, you've got a couple of months to find a new job. So there are lots of things you can do to prepare 
and they'll come from your heart and your head as to the best way for you to prepare because it won't be the same way as me. Okay, and the third step for your adventurous decision or adventure that you're going to have is what could you do if it all went wrong? If it all went belly up, I was going to use a swear word, but I won't. If it all went belly up, what could I do for self-care? Who could help me? Could my family and friends help me? Could a colleague help me find another job? Could my LinkedIn connections help me find a different job? What could I do that would be self-caring for me after that adventure hasn't gone quite as well as I could? So if you combine those three stages together, what you're doing is minimising the risk of that adventure going wrong and of you being fearful and that fear taking over and you're maximising your potential for having an adventurous life and making those adventurous decisions. And seeing it down on paper as well, whenever I write one of these up, I see it on paper and I think, right, I've written it down now. It's logical. It's not that emotional, mental turmoil that I get that keeps me awake at three in the morning going, oh my God, should I, should I run the 638 miles of the Southwest Coast Path? Oh my God, should I? Will I fall off the cliff? Will I have enough time? Am I being an awful mother leaving my son for a weekend to go and do these sorts of things? It takes it away from that and it allows me to be logical about it and put it on a paper. And that's the real key. Adventurous decisions are normally emotional, mental kind of states of mind. If you get it down on paper and make it logical and ask for help from people, it becomes a really doable thing and it makes your life so much more adventurous. So that is the first two steps of the process, really, to thinking about those adventurous decisions. And that's the way I would always do it. I think to myself, what is it that my heart's really telling me I want to do? What is it that I would do if I couldn't fail? And then I plan those three steps out. Now, there's a bit more to it than that as well. You can go to the next step, which is then planning for those things so you might end up like Lisa said she's got a couple of things she wants to do a new job and a relationship so then you've got your your fears around those and you've got your small steps to how you can prepare and repair those but then you might want to put a bit of a timeline to it and a bit of a plan of small steps because people say you can't eat an elephant whole you're right but you can chunk it down you can eat it bit by bit that poor elephant can't you and you can digest it so making a step-by-step -step plan and there are different ways you can do that you could mind map it you can have it in a uh, a bit of an Excel document with those step-by-step -step plans. And I think we, we show a lot of that planning process on the Find Your Flow weekends and also on the um, A Life Less Ordinary weekend that Jane and I are planning at the end of um, November. So Jane Galloway from Quiet the Hive and I are working up a little bit of magic and a, a, a massive slice of magic, actually, I'm going to be so bold as to say, um, which will take you through pretty much every area of your life and help you break it down, what you want to achieve, what you want to do, how you're going to do it, what the small steps are to it, and give you the tools to be able to do that. And I'll bung the link down um, in this video as well afterwards for that. There's a, there's a bit of a sign up for the waiting list for that at the end of November. And that shows you a bit more about how to plan for this. And it's a really bloody exciting weekend, I just have to say that. So think about those fears make them logical by putting them on paper and then go forth and plan in your own way. You might diarise it, you might put it on a calendar, you might have it as a mind map. Have a think about those things and let me know in the Find Your Flow group what adventurous decision you're going to make, what adventurous thing you're going to try and do. Even if it feels tiny, pop it in there because we can then keep each other accountable. One of the best things I've ever done is work with Jane and we'll tell each other the adventurous thing we want to do and we might go, Jane, I really want to write a book. And we'll be like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I can't believe I've just said I want to be an author. But Jane will then hold me accountable. And she'll say, how are you getting on with that first page of that very first book that you want to write? Do you need a hand? Do you want to come away for a weekend and you can write it while we're sitting by the sea and it'll be marvellous. So keeping yourself accountable to it, it's a really good way of doing it in the Find Your Flow group. So if you want to do that, share with us your adventures because also selfishly, it might spark us off on some different adventurous ideas ourselves and make us think, well, actually, if Lisa can do that, I can bloody well do that as well. So it's not just about you, it's about inspiring others to do it as well. And if you can feel you're inspiring others, you're more likely to make more adventurous decisions because you think, bloody hell, I've helped people with that one. I'm going to do another one and it might inspire them too. So share away in the Find Your Flow group. I should put the link in for that A Life Less Ordinary um, weekend in there if you want to find out a bit more about that. But please, please let me know what your adventures are because I cannot wait to hear about them. And if you've got any questions at all 
or want the worksheets in relation to this um, Facebook Live, I've got them all, and you can then have all the templates and you can fill them out yourself. Um, so drop me a line, or drop me a messenger or something like that on Facebook or a comment in the Find Your Flow group and I will happily send them over to you. Um, hope you all have the most adventurous, adventurous weekends. Oh my goodness, Angie, you've decided to swim the Humber in July. How far is that? I'd like to know how far that is because the Humber's a beast, isn't it? That's a blinking long way. Um, so, Angie, I hope you've been able to break it down a little bit and keep um, some of those fears in mind and put a bit of a plan together to help you overcome them and let us know. Um, God, I, I can only imagine that's quite a lot of miles, Angie. Good luck with that. Um, but yeah, anyone who would like to share their adventures, let us know. Have a super adventurous weekend. I'm getting my COVID jab tomorrow morning. Woohoo! Then I'm going to go out stand up paddleboarding with the family and hopefully recover from the COVID jab with not too many side effects. Um, so wish me luck with that. And I shall see you all in the Find Your Flow group and hear about your adventures soon. Thanks so much for coming along, lovely. See you soon.